Hi, I'm Ruth Gray. Um, I'm here to paint uh, Willersley Castle this morning. Um, I often paint in and around the Derwent Valley and I live in Belper, so a lot of my paintings are of Belper. Um, so for today we're painting in um, acrylics and they're called Interactive Atelier Acry Acrylics and we're doing it on um, linen canvas and I'm testing out my new uh, easel today. <laughs> So fingers crossed it all works out. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, use charcoal first, just to lay, draw it out. So just getting in the um, hills at the back. Just um, sketching it out roughly at first. Um, charcoal so that um, it disappears when you start painting. So it's important not to put everything in that you see, so I'm not going to put in, there's a big tree in front of um, Willisley Castle, I'm not going to put that in. That's a rough sketch <coughs> of where I want to put everything. Um, nothing's terribly accurate, but um, it doesn't matter. Um, you can, with acrylics, you can <coughs> paint over and over and um, make it correct towards the end. It's just getting getting something on there straight away. <coughs> so I'm, I'm going to um, start painting now, and on my palette I've got olive green, sap green. Titanium white, Naples yellow, yellow ochre, French ultramarine, diazin purple, um, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. On the, and they're the colours that I'm going to use to create this painting. <coughs> so I always start off with a sky. 
So we've got a little bit of titanium white in there. And uh, today's a typical English day, so um, we've put a little bit of blue in there, but mainly we want a little bit of brown in there to give it that English English tone. And if you're unsure about um, your colours when you're mixing them, just hold your brush up to what it is that you're painting, and um, you'll see whether you've got the right colour or not. So that pretty much looks like the day. <laughs> So just, just roughly paint it in. You can see that the um, charcoal line's disappearing now. Just mix up various tones of the sky and get your clouds in. So using the um, same mixture in the middle, we're going to do the furthest hillside away. So we're going to add some blue to that and then a hint, a tiny little bit of green. So things that are further away um, reflect the sky. So they're more blue the further away things are. The closer things are, the more saturated in colour they are. I've noticed that the um, on Willersley Castle the lower windows are similar colour to this so um, I'm just going to put those, those windows in. So where the blinds are down on the windows Now I'm going to do this distant hill here, which is darker. painting outdoors it's um, a case of just getting all the information that you can down on the canvas and not worrying too much about details so you've got two different shades of green there so you can see that it's receding into the background then this section of trees here will be darker so I'm going to put in a really dark really dark um, section of trees there and let that dry so that's the olive green and the burnt umber can you hold it hold the brush up
brush I'm using is just a filbert size 8 brush and it's got it's flat and it's rounded so it, it's multi -function, functional so you can do building shapes and tree shapes <laughs> leaves are coming on the trees so you can start adding in some autumn tones into that mixture. So whilst Ruth's just filling in some of the sort of background and the trees with those textures, I'm just going to have a little bit of a look at um, Willersley Castle and find out a little bit about that from Adrian Farmer. Hello, <laughs> Willersley Castle. Um, obviously, Richard Arkwright, as he became uh, more uh, assertive and, and confident in, in what he was doing. He, he'd lived close to the mills at Rock House, which is on the other side of Scarthing Rock, on the other side of the mills, and now he wanted to have his own castle, effectively, uh, and there was no castle around, so he had to create his own. Uh, and Willisley Castle, as it became known, uh, is what he came up with, and it, it's as if he's looked at the estate. There's a farmhouse at the bottom of the uh, of the hill, He's felt, well, that's not where I want to be. Uh, I'm not going to rebuild the farmhouse. I'm going to build from scratch. So he's gone up the hill. Uh, uh, it's almost as if he's, 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 he's wandered up the hill, got to the point where he thinks, this is perfect. Uh, and so he then made them quarry out of the hillside so that there was a big enough shelf. But the stone that was taken out of the hillside is then placed in front of where he was standing to create a bigger shelf, big enough to put this this mansion, this grand house. Brilliant. And we'll just pick up with where Ruth's got to and we'll hear from Adrian again in a bit. I'm just, um, I've just put in a variety of um, background colours there and I'm using the end of my brush just to put in some um, trunks and branches to give it more of a tree-like appearance. I'm just going to zoom in on those a little bit Ruth so we can see them. Basically, you're just put, putting in around the building at the moment, finding the shapes. And again, there's nothing um, too accurate about this. It can all be tidied up late, later on. That's nearly the background done for now. Let's start thinking about the foreground. So 
we've got a, a real big sweep of um, grass in front of the um, the building. Um, we've got to be careful not to make it too too green. So use use your um, use your colour that you've got out straight out of the tube, but mix it in with the uh, colours that you've already got on your palette, and then that that should take off the the glariness of the green, give it a more natural look. I'm just using a, a little bit of water on this just to um, enable me to cover in the area quicker. So um, always paint in the direction that the land is going and it will save you um, a lot of hassle really. If your brush strokes are painted in the way the land goes then um, you don't have to draw in any lines or anything like that. Just like the background, use a variety of tones, and you can see that the uh, charcoal is now beginning to disappear into the paint. Just um, basically, we're trying to fill the canvas before we can get to the good bit, which is painting the castle itself. <laughs> Arkwright lived there for? He never lived there. Oh, didn't he? No. Um, Arkwright died before it was finished. There was, there was The first architect was a grand London architect. Uh, he was determined to do things properly, um, but wasn't entirely happy with the work. Um, and then there was a fire, and rather than get the, uh, the plans back out and carry on where they'd left off, uh, he went to Thomas Gardner, who was a utoxeter architect who was a lot cheaper and actually listened to what Arkwright actually wanted and I think uh, made it more of a, a home which is what it needed to be really and um, and that's it was different but by the time all that work was finished Arkwright had died so it was his son Richard Jr that, that moved in so so Richard Arkwright never lived at Willersley so it was it was Richard Arkwright Jr that uh, ended up with the there's an office at the back, which was supposed to be would have been Richard Arkwright's, if it lived, his, his sort of office space at the back, but just looks onto the cliff face because, of course, he's effectively it's sat in a quarry because they had to quarry that stone out to make room for the house. Not a very grand. No, not as, <laughs> not as grand. But uh, I, I guess it reflects uh, Arkwright a little in that it's got proper frontage to it. it you know, it looks. The, it looks the the, uh, the business on the front, but there's there's not a lot of depth to it. Uh, oh dear, that's a bit. But it's it's um, an incredible building, but it, it it's there's a lot there in front, 
uh, and th there just wasn't room for very much behind. Trees. It's really dark there, and I can only imagine how dark it is at the back of the house. <laughs> so I've just used a, a little bit of um, purple in with burnt umber green, just to um, create these shadows here. <clears throat> I've used the same brush all the way through so far. I might have to change it soon for me. When, when you're painting anything, it's always about the light and the dark, so um, I'm trying not to worry too much about how complex this building is in front of me. I'm just looking at um, what's dark and what's light, so I'm just looking at where all the dark parts of it are at the moment. some of these trees that are here in the foreground. When you're working on a painting, um, work around the whole painting all at once. Um, some people start in one corner and move across, that's, that's okay, but um, when you're outside you need to work across the whole painting because you've got to try and capture the atmosphere as it is in that moment. And if you start in this corner and it's sunny and you finish over there and it's raining, that's not good. <laughs> some of those, some of that detailing. Um, a canvas like I have today, a linen one, um, you don't get that glaring white um, canvas coming through so um, you don't have to cover 
every single speck of the canvas. Um, you could use an ordinary white canvas and paint a base layer of the same colour over it before and let it dry before you start painting. So we've nearly managed to get rid of all that um, space, all that, fill it all in, it's all filled in. And it's nearly time to tackle the main event. off any longer. <laughs> I just have to get on with the painting of the uh, castle itself now. <clears throat> so I'm going to change my brush now. This is a called an angle shader, uh, De La Rowney. It's quarter inch flat and it's shaped at an angle that allows you to get more accurate detail. So I'm looking at the, um, the type of stone that Willisley Castle was built with and uh, trying to get the right colour. So I've used yellow ochre, uh, titanium white and burnt umber. And it's around the building um, and try and get more and more accurate as, as it goes. So um, as you can see it started raining now and um, we've got lovely rain splatters on, on the painting but I actually quite like it. A lot of my pictures I use um, I use spray anyway to um, get the same effect so all is not lost. I'm just going around to paint the details now on the on the building. You can see where I um, painted in the windows previously, just the the colour of them. <clears throat> now you can tidy them up. So I'm just going to try and get this castle effect we've got these little turrets here so p painting um, the buildings or any buildings like like these old buildings means you can really have a look at the detail and how the, how they might have um, designed them. It makes you wonder what their choices were. I'm also going for the castle look. <laughs> So you can see the initial sketch doesn't have to be so accurate at all, but it just gives you a good, a good start. A lot of people spend a lot of time 
drawing and doing an accurate drawing in the beginning. You don't need to. slightly lighter now so I'm just going around putting in um, the details on the buildings. Trying to get the colour of the roof, which is almost silvery. So we're just adding blue to that, that mixture. I'm just going to leave the um, building at the moment because I'll start fiddling so I'm going to start looking around the rest of the paint and see, seeing how I can tie it, tie it together. So I'm going to use a, quite a big brush now, um, a size 8 and that's uh, angle shaped as well. I'm just going to get the titanium white 
for the glue. I don't use any water when I'm mixing my paint, it's just pure paint. If you did um, put a lot of water in there, you'd uh, lose the um, saturation of the colour. So we've got a fabulous mist now. It's descending on me and um, the background here. And it would be a shame not to uh, incorporate incorporate that. So um, the brush is loaded up with that um, mixture there. And I'm just going to place it on here. And you just bring it down over the background and start blending. And that's the way you can um, start to show the mist effect and it ties it starts tying it all together so it's circular motions only only do this when the background's dry already which is quite difficult when it's raining on your painting <laughs> you can see now that um, you've got got the mist descending over the trees and it's all starting to look a bit more realistic. So when you're um, painting clouds and sky you've got to remember that it's um, it's all around you that so the mists envelop everything. So you've got to think holistically when you're painting. What what is happening in front of you? You've got the you've got the clouds and they're actually in amongst the trees. So don't just paint the sky, paint the tree. You have to paint the whole thing in one. So to get those autumn colours, I'm going to do the same. So I've just mix in the um, burnt sienna into that mixture knock it off it's one of the things I love about this area is the mists that come down especially this time of year so beautiful to look a bit more autumn-y. Some of those same colours do come into the foreground as well.
trying to get some more of this green sweep in here. So Willersley uh, was with the Arkwright family until 1923. Frederick died and his son had to sell the estate to pay for the uh, death taxes. Uh, and now, 97 years after uh, that sale, it's on the market again. It was with the Methodist Guild. They became known as the Christian Guild, who ran it as a hotel. And now we're just waiting to find out what the future of Willersley will be. Well, only time will tell, we just hope it will carry on being for public use. Welcome back. Um, as you can see, I'm now in my studio. Um, the rain got so bad that we had to abandon painting outside and that sometimes happens. So um, here's a painting on my easel. I've done some charcoal sketches over the top, which I'll show you next. Um, but before that, I'll just show you what I did with my palette. So um, I wrapped it in a plastic bag a few days ago when we were out on location just to keep the colours moist. And uh, they're still in there. And they're still wet and ready to use so that I can carry on with the painting with the same colours that I had before. We've got all the information we need, we've got photographs and we've got the basic layout so we can now carry on. I'm going to start again with the sky. So, same palette as before, I'm just using titanium white and a touch of blue. I'm just going to lighten the sky up a bit.
I just took um, a little bit of a pause because it's very important to have a cup of tea and I've brought the uh, camera a little bit closer to the painting so you can see uh, more of the detail as I begin to put it the windows and all the different architectural details onto Willersley Castle itself. I'm just going to tackle this area uh, first because I'm not, not quite happy with it. So some aqua tint into the um, background there. Back in with the titanium white into the distance. And bring it down over that. So we get that misty effect that we had on the day. Circular motion dry brush. This is called scumbling. We've got a mixture of, of burnt sienna, uh, titanium white and Naples yellow here to um, put in the details on the castle. And you notice I'm using a smaller brush so this is um, a number 12 round small very small I've changed brush again. This is the smallest brush that I use, and it's a, th a three zero brown. And this is perfect for putting in these tiny window details. And this is what will start bringing the castle to life.
the this background bit here I'm not very happy with at the moment so I've um, got one of my favourite colours, Brilliant Violet and I'm going to use that to liven it up so that rattling you can hear is me just cleaning the brush so before I put the brush back into the paint I always dry it thoroughly on a, on a cloth So I've got this lovely purple colour, I'm just going to mix that up with this um, aqua colour here to get a really nice background colour there. And that's, that's helping me get that distance that I'm after in the background. And help me recreate that misty effect that we had on the day. So the good thing with acrylics is you can keep going over and over until you get the effect that you want. So the difference between painting outdoors and painting at home is when you get home you can start adding your own personal touches. When you're out you can still add your own personal touches but you, you're probably more likely to follow what's in front of you than what you can make up. So to, I'm basically making this into a painting rather than an exact copy. Just add touches of that into those trees there. That pushes that, that hill back further. I'm going to take a bigger brush again, put it into the white, knock it Knock the white off like I did when, when we were out. I'm gonna just take some more paint off there and then go over. So the sky is made up of a lot of layers. Scum, scumbling just blending it over those furthest hills and that will help bring back that misty look again I'm quite aggressive with the brush and as you can imagine that my brushes don't last very long. You don't have to paint like this. Everyone's got their own technique. I'm just showing you how I do it. There's no right or wrong when it comes to art.
I'm just happier now. Happier with that. So just taking the small brush again, drying it off on my cloth. I'm going to add in some more details that I can see around the painting. So down here we have a little fence. Is also the trunks of these trees. Sometimes get a ruler just to see where I'm at. So when you feel like you're starting to fiddle, like I am now, it's time, I think it's nearly time to put the brush down before it's ruined. So that's what I'm going to do. All that's left is just to um, sign the picture. Some people like a tiny signature, I like a big one. So once it's signed, it's finished. Thank you for watching me paint Willersley Castle. If you'd like to join me on the 25th of October, We'll be holding a plein air session in the mill grounds and I'd love to see you there. All the details are on the Cromford Mills website.